Welcome to this episode of the Harpreet Singh Show, Building Relationships Through Dialogue. Our endeavor is to bring different perspectives to you so that we can understand about a different particular topic so that we have something in our mind as to what is happening in our society. Today, the topic on which we are going to focus upon is women power and how women are being abused in our society. Whether it is the Indo-Canadian society or the mainstream society, probably it's the same thing happening everywhere. But especially for the Indo-Canadian community, it's a quite a hard fact that though we claim ourselves to be religious and we say women are equal in our society, but do we actually give that equal status to women? We have two guests to talk on this particular issue, Tanaya Fialo, who is a former domestic abuse survivor, and Navigail, who is the founder of uh, Women Girl Power. Tanaya Fialo has also started a ministry called Save the Women Ministry, and in this, uh, she's trying to bring those women who have been abused back into the mainstream. Let's welcome our guests to the program. Welcome to the program. Thank, Thank you for you. having me. Thank you. So a little bit about you, Tanaya. Uh, What's your background and what prompted you to start this ministry? Well, I'm a former domestic abuse uh, survivor mm -hmm. and I was, my, my ex-husband was convicted several times of domestic abuse and in the end what it had led me to was g falling into prostitution mm -hmm. in order to fund a custody battle to pr protect me and my children from him right. after his fourth conviction in which he had run me over mm -hmm. and um, so I'm now out of prostitution and domestic violence and I have founded Save the Women in order to rescue women out of that and right. empower them. So what are the kind of challenges which women face in the in quotes mainstream society? Well, some of the challenges that they face, I mean, I, I remember when, when I, the, the police would be phoned, mm -hmm. uh, the, the cops, the first thing they would do when they would come to my house is say, what did you do to make them angry? Mm -hmm. Even if it wasn't me phoning the police, it's automatically, what did you do? Instead right. of channeling it so back to the abuser. So just having the blame on the lady itself. Yeah, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, channeling the blame uh, back on the abuser on his fourth conviction, mm -hmm. fourth conviction in which he ran me over with his truck with my child in the truck. He was given a uh, one-year probation, mm -hmm. a $500 fine, mm -hmm. and then he was ordered to take anger management in which he got kicked out of the anger management because mm -hmm. he was too angry. Right. Right? So then when I had to go into prostitution to, fund, to raise a lot of money to protect uh, my, my children and mm -hmm. myself, I was angry. Um, I felt that I was failed by the system because I was let down by legal aid. They right. denied me. Uh, legal aid because of the fact that I was living in a battered woman's shelter mm -hmm. fleeing domestic violence but the fact of the matter was we owned a house together but mm -hmm. I wasn't living in that house so I was turned down by legal aid so I had to prostitute to get the money right. to protect me and my kids mm -hmm. so in the end I ended up winning custody and then I founded Save the Women. These are the issues that the women is always at the far end reaching and then she's always looked upon uh, down and also you know she is always at the receiving end that's what you're trying to say. Yes. Great we'll continue yes. with that discussion. Uh, Navi, uh, you started this uh, Women Girl Power, and especially being from the Indo-Canadian community, yeah. we're also hearing that, especially in India and even abroad also, l feticide, infanticide, all these issues are a major threat to our communities. Mm -hmm. What do you have to say about that? I think it's definitely a threat, and that's why uh, my aunt and I decided to start Global Girl Power, is because everything uh, that happens somewhere else, we always say it's in, in a different country and it doesn't affect us, mm -hmm. but women women's rights are human rights and that's right. how we look at it and what happens in India and China right now will eventually affect us here in North America and that's what people aren't realizing is issues like infanticide and female feticide mm -hmm. the, when the global population is going down the ri the risks of trafficking um, all those things go up all over the world right and the gender imbalance is actually really startling right now but that's quite strange that uh, we uh, indo canadians especially we being religious people we claim ourselves to be mm -hmm. religious and in our scriptures it is written that women have to be treated equal and uh, especially in sikhism we talk about sokyu manda ke mm -hmm. jame rajan that uh, uh, how can you you know de degenerate the women from whom you are born mm -hmm. so what do you think in practice and in theory what is the difference I think that when it comes to practice, it every person almost forgets, like we talk about being a religious person or having a certain set of values, that when it comes to your own experiences, mm -hmm. people necessarily, they make that decision based on what they're going through at that time. Right. And 
we can't generalize and say all Indian people do this or all Chinese people do this. It's a global issue. It's not one community. It's not one country. Mm -hmm. It's a global issue, so and it's a mindset. So this is prevalent in other communities also. Yes, definitely. Okay. Do you agree yeah, to this? I, I agree with that. And one thing I find too is because of the times that are changing mm -hmm. and the poverty that is coming about and the drop in the economy and right. things like that, it's putting you know many many cases the men are the providers of the home. Right. So now they're under a lot of pr pressure, mm -hmm. and when they're under a lot of pressure, they become angry. Angry, right. right, and I've noticed um, with women that I've been working with that have been becoming abused. It's because of the, of the pressure that has been built in the, in the household due okay. to the way that the economy uh -huh. is. It's added so more economy stress. Economy is one factor, but mm -hmm. do you also think social customs and uh, rituals and our thought process also is quite uh, different? Like in the Indo-Canadian community now, this is one thought which is prevalent: is that you have to, you know, like spend money on the girl, and then you don't have money. But later on, even during marriage time, you have to exchange money and uh, yes. gifts and all those right. kind of things which is a quite a big thing in India right now well, is it prevalent it's in the same this thing in my well? culture as well okay. and you know I'm, I'm a woman of faith by Christianity mm -hmm. and it's the same thing I mean when the woman uh, when the couple gets married the woman's family pays right pays for the wedding and mm -hmm. so on right and I feel that you know in the Christian religion um, basically you know you're supposed to honor your wife as right. Christ loves mm -hmm. the church and things like that but mm -hmm. then there's the other aspect where some Christian men will go into legalism where oh you're my wife so you have to obey me mm -hmm. I, I was in a marriage right. like that you're my wife you have to obey me and I'd say obey you in the Lord right there's a difference right right so it just depends on where you want to where you want to take it okay so Navi, like I was talking to you about in our culture basically uh, we talk about equality to the women but from the Gurdwaras Mandirs and all these places where we are uh, going there for religious uh, duties we are performing over there but anytime do these kind of things are they talked over there uh, I think they're starting to. I think mm -hmm. it takes people in the community that have the guts to stand up right. for these issues. Like the whole reason we started Gl Global Girl Power is someone like my aunt, who's a very strong individual who's mm -hmm. been through many of the issues here that we're talking about. Right. It took someone like her to take that step, go into the Gurdwaras and say, right. listen, we're preaching religion here mm -hmm. and be being equal to you know, all men and women are all equal, right. but then this is what's happening in our countries behind the cloak of faith, and mm -hmm. that's not acceptable. Right. We'll continue with the right. discussion. Let's go for a small break and come back, and uh, we'll focus on some of the issues which you have raised after this break. Sure. Once again, welcome back to the Hat Preaching Show, building relationships through dialogue. Today is we are talking about a very important issue and we need all to be aware that this is a major serious crisis. But are we ready to listen and act upon it? Let's talk about this issue. So before the break, like you were talking, that this has started and that was the idea behind you coming forward and starting this organization. Mm -hmm. But that the question that arises is that in these places where we go for uh, religious purposes, uh, do you think that this kind of awareness is over there? For example, we talk about the Sokyu Manda Akhij, it's Jame Rajan, but even at the Golden Temple also, women are not allowed to do Kirtan over there. Women are not allowed to do some services over there. Even as a matter of fact, in other uh, religions also, same is the thing. Lip service is there, but in practice it's not happening, for which uh, there's a lot of uh, you know people are getting antagonized, they want to do something, but nothing is happening because the clergy is so strong, mm -hmm. they don't want things to be removed. So how do you think and look into this issue? I mean, I can't go and change hundreds of years of what our customs, but what we can do, which is what I think people like myself and she's doing here, is mm -hmm. just creating the, that awareness so the people that are here now right. go forward with that seed in their mind that it's a possibility for change, and mm -hmm. that's all it takes is when you give somebody an idea, change right. is definitely possible. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I don't know what we can do about things like, you know, women doing Kirtan at the Golden Temple, but why not? Right. I feel like people need to change with the times. Yes, this was maybe a custom in Guru Nanak's time or mm -hmm. whenever, but these the times have changed. But and it's we're quite strange that Guru Nanak was the first person who's talked about equality and he gave that kind of status to both men and equal yeah. status, women. But again, that that's what is quite strange, that uh, this religion which was started for a different purpose, it's absolutely going against the tenets of what was being taught. Definitely, and I think that's, we, we've talked about this before mm -hmm. as well, of uh, what the difference is between religion now and religion when it was created right. and over the years people have really begun to use it mm -hmm. for their own serving their own purpose right. and not looking behind why these customs are in place mm -hmm. it's just a way for them to serve their own purpose and right. that's why 
the people who are following these religions, you need to dig deeper, understand mm -hmm. why it is you're following what you're following, and right. what's the purpose behind that. Absolutely. And if the purpose doesn't agree with you, say something about it. Right, so come and stand and come speak and stand. of it. Come and stand. I think, stands, it, I think right it comes tonight. down to, you know, having somewhat of a moral compass mm -hmm. as well. It's not about being feministic mm -hmm. or anything like that. Women still need to be subdued in areas and be the women, mm -hmm. right? But we also want to empower women to right. say that, no, abuse will not be tolerated mm -hmm. because the statistics show that two thirds of the children mm -hmm. that are raised by domestic abuse or in domestic abuse, uh, abusive homes yeah. be, re end up repeating the cycle and uh, doing the same thing. Right. And that was the case in my, my situation. Mm -hmm. My mother was abused by my father. Mm -hmm. So I ended up marrying a man that was just like my father. And mm -hmm. I repeated the cycle of abuse and it pa gets passed on from generation to generation. And right. in that, when, you, when you've been a domestic abuse uh, survivor, in a lot of cases, women can fall prey to drug addiction because they self-medicate the pain, right? right? Mm -hmm. So what does that say for our future generations, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely, mm -hmm. and but you had that uh, quality. Uh, faith uh, was a major mover in your life, though yes. you adopted a different path in life, but then you turned back and now that's why you're running this ministry to bring awareness amongst uh, those uh, disturbed ladies that come back, there is a ray of hope. Now, yes. again, as I talked about the clergy with Navi, uh, what is your feeling in your society? Are you accepted? Are the women accepted now or still, you are still considered to be that, no, you have to be, like you mentioned, that kind of, uh, you know, stereotype thinking which exists? No, I feel that, uh, you know, in, in my religion, in, in Christianity, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're, you're supposed to uplift your wife. Right. And, you know, it's, it's a, quite similar to the Sikh religion. Right. Um, however, um, there are scriptures in the Bible that, you know, it talks about how a woman should submit to her husband mm -hmm. and some men will take that scripture and they'll run with it right. however it says to, a, a woman should su submit to her husband mm -hmm. onto the Lord right so if your husband is telling you to do something that is not godly mm -hmm. you don't have to submit to him right right but I, I've had men say that mm -hmm. to their to their wife well right. you have to submit to because me. it's written over there because it's written but you right. got you got to take you, know, you can't take it out of context. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. So a question that arises now is that uh, as this uh, world is advancing and people are having different thoughts, but again, when it comes to women, still that uh, stereotype thinking still exists that uh, man, uh, women was made for man and the man is the Lord and he has or she has to submit to him. Now, what do you think? Is this changing right now in the new generation which is coming? No doubt we are finding lots of independence which is coming, which is good to some extent. But also we are finding that this independence is also leading, especially the youngsters, to other extreme ends also. Mm -hmm. What is your viewpoint on this? I think what everybody needs to understand is, first and foremost, we're all human beings, mm -hmm. regardless of man, women, whatever country you come from. Mm -hmm. And it's just about treating the other person with respect. Right. And I think that also comes with learning that in your homes. Mm -hmm. And if you've learned that, like she said, if it depends on what you've seen in your home. Mm -hmm. I've grown up in a home where I was always given a voice and I was always given the opportunity to speak. Right. So that's carried me through in life. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily we say it's the men that are always the abusers it's also women abusing other women, oh, which yeah. I found is a huge issue these days. Well, again, as you have pointed out this factor, and especially in our culture, it is the women that is the mother-in-law or the sister-in-law, or that is what it comes forward mm -hmm. and uh, lots of problems arise from there. Yeah, and I wouldn't say it's necessarily always the Well, again, of That's course, generalized, of course. a misconception, which <laughs> it, it, has, it has been fed to my generation right. from our previous generation. So now we have a fear against mother-in-law, daughter-in-law relationships, which right. also is incorrect. Right. And again, I'll go back to that. It's about respecting the person that you're around mm -hmm. and then you'll receive that respect back and if you don't feel that stand up for yourself and speak out right. but, but what about the women that stand up for themselves and they speak out and then mm -hmm. they get beat i mean yeah. i had a situation yeah, i was course. working with a woman and this a is what woman. my next question would have mm -hmm. been basically okay. which i would like to discuss in details after this break sure. but uh, because this is a major issue if yeah. women come forward and especially yeah. those women who are living single it's a major issue and especially in our culture how they are looked upon we would like to talk on this particular mm -hmm. issue after this break okay. Once again, welcome back to the Hub Preaching Show. What we are focusing upon today is very important. And we need to discuss in our homes also, like Navi and uh, Tanaya are talking about the issues which need to be discussed at home. This should be a constant kind of reminder to us that we need to deliberate upon these issues. But are we ready to discuss these issues at home? Let's further talk on this issue. So before the break, like you were mentioning, and Tanaya, you just jumped in and we were talking. So what, what did you want to say that uh, uh, when we talk about the women, 
again, it's all general terms. Of course, there are good and bad apples everywhere. Yes. But overall, what we are finding in the society, as I said uh, to Navi also, that our children need independence, our girls need independence. But again, to some extent, when it goes to too much extreme, then egos clash and then families cannot prosper further. Well, I, I mean, I've come across some women and obviously because I'm, I'm all about women's empowerment, I mm -hmm. speak publicly internationally about right. this. So I, I come across a lot of women that, in my opinion, are very feministic. Right. And it's almost like they want to wear the pants, they mm -hmm. want to be the man. And I think that a, a woman should be a woman, right. a man should be a man, but a right. woman also needs to know her rights mm -hmm. and the aspect that abuse will not be tolerated. You cannot lay your fingers on me, you cannot abuse me, and if you do, mm -hmm. hopefully you will go to jail. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm I f firmly believe that a woman, you know, should still be be the woman and be right. be submissive in a womanly way, right. but not submissive in an abusive right. way. What is your opinion on this? Um, I don't think submissive is the uh -huh. right word. I think we each have our roles, like she said, which I agree with. And it all comes down to respect. Like right. for me, um, you know, when I think about the future and being married, it's it's not that I'm going to go ahead and be like, I'm better than you. I mm -hmm. wear the pants. I make the decisions. Right. I think it needs to be equal right. because I feel like I like I was saying I'm raised in a household where I get to make my own decisions right. I'm very independent so are my siblings mm -hmm. and I think it's just respecting and giving the person the, the rights to make their own decisions right. and I agree. also yeah. yes women should know their rights that's where it's mm -hmm. we're always in especially in our culture we're given our duties of right. what we c should be doing or how a woman mm -hmm. should behave but no one ever takes the time to tell you this is your right, right. as a human being mm -hmm. first mm -hmm. right. and abuse on all forms is not tolerated to anybody right. uh -huh. and but, I found yeah. uh, Harpreet from my personal experience as a domestic abuse survivor mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I have had my abuse be so severe where my husband has urinated on me mm -hmm. defecated on me uh, broken bones in me right me over right. okay but in all honesty even though there was a lot of physical abuse right. the stuff that affected me years down the road and gave me a lot of post-trauma was the mental yeah, absolutely, abuse absolutely, and yeah. the constant uh, tearing down of my my demeanor mm -hmm. and and just uh, basically breaking of my spirit right that's what it is absolutely that emotional uh, disturbance which you have to face after this is much much more traumatic mm -hmm, now yes. again as I was asking before that uh, after marriage first of all uh, understanding was the basic uh, concept by which our families used to be running for a long time. But what right now we are finding as I raise this issue that uh, that individualistic approach which is coming, no doubt, as I said, women empowerment has to be there, but to a limited extent whereby that ego doesn't clash. Mm -hmm. That is a major uh, you know, clash between new weds uh, now what we are finding. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel that can be addressed? Because in our community right now, divorce rates which were unheard of before are coming forward, mm -hmm. which is absolutely like what is happening in the mainstream. So what do you have to say about that? I think first and foremost, everyone needs to really work on their communication skills. Mm -hmm. I'm a firm believer that when you put egos aside and really communicate what the issue at hand is right. and let go of all the fluff, mm -hmm. it it's possible to solve any problems. And right. sitting down at the table, I remember growing up as a kid, everybody ate dinner together. And mm -hmm. those sort of values we've lost along the way. Right. So what do you th feel is your solution to that though? Like, okay, get rid of the fluff and all yeah. that, but what do you think is the solution for us as a society to move forward? I think it's just basically like my generation needs to not just completely be gung-ho on our beliefs because mm -hmm. we do get caught up on that because we are very independent right. and the older generation is still on on their whatever they have grown up with right. which is almost completely opposite of we mm -hmm. have I think there needs to be a middle ground where both need to understand each mm -hmm. other but move forward and look at what the solution is that's gonna solve the problem immediately rather than I find there's always a lot of he said, she said, this right. said. So the lack of communication lack is one Lack of reason. communication, but, uh, but still, that, what uh, is the solution? Yeah, we'll, uh, yeah. we'll mm -hmm. talk about it from your perspective. How do yeah. you feel? But along with that, you know, after marriage, what I discussed this issue, yeah. that uh, the interference from the family of the girl's side, mm -hmm. especially in our culture, mm -hmm. how, how, how important is that and what do you feel about that? Because the thought process of that culture is or that generation is different mm -hmm. from your. So yeah. that interference also cry, uh, time, uh, creates problems? Um, I think I, I wouldn't call it interference like I, I come from a family where it, we're very open on both sides so right. when I go ahead and get married I uh -huh. feel like you're one big family right. and there's no such thing as interference you right. are one big family if one person has an issue 
issue. Uh -huh. It should be everybody's addressed issue there, and right. addressed together. Right. That's the point of family. Great. So, Tana, towards the end, uh, what do you feel? What is the solution? What we have talked? How to go about? Because you are going all across the world, talking to people, meeting people, meeting ladies, men, all. So, right. what do you feel in a few sentences? How we can have a consensus on this particular issue? Well, I think it's um, you know a lot of it. There's, I could go on about this for hours, mm -hmm. Harpreet. Right. But to me, a lot of it is where is women in today's society? Where are they getting their identity? Right. Right. I mean, I see so many girls that are out there, and they've got their their fingernails, their long hair extensions, their mm -hmm. push-up bras, and their breasts hanging out and stuff, mm -hmm. and they're getting their identity right. all in this. Mm -hmm. But where's the identity That's in spirit. there? That's right? Where's Nobody's it in talking there? about it. Yeah. You know, and I, I the women I work with, I, I say cover up because mm -hmm. you need to like with me I get my identity in my in my faith in right. Jesus Christ I don't need to go and put it right. put it out there so I think it, it's um, a matter of you know letting society know that you know as women we're better than that we're right. not just Absolutely. the shell of the not woman just a be a woman thing. Absolutely. Yes. so yes. that has to be propagated to be a woman inside not Absolutely. just outside Absolutely. great thank you very much and uh, what do you feel like glamorization and how the women also are coming forward uh, as she mentioned towards then what do you have to say I think she's perfectly correct in that, that we need to understand that we are more than our appearance. Right. And as human beings, we really need to work on our spirit. And I right. think that's where society's problems are. Everyone's forgotten their spirit and mm -hmm. they're on the chase. Okay. But yes. everybody wants, you go through all that, you come back to that and work on your spirit. Mm -hmm. Find what makes you a good person on the inside that's and right. follow that. So is there a paradigm shift? Do you feel that in the society right now is something happening on this particular ground? Are people and especially women realizing that we are not just materialistic things, we are spiritual beings definitely and I think the reason for that is because there are so many resources and organizations that are doing so much good work out in the world mm -hmm. and it's pe more people need to stand up do more work and get the word out there right. and tell all those people who might be lost or looking for a way that mm -hmm. there is help for you there is a different way right. and that's all stands with if you feel inspired by something mm -hmm. take that chance go forward with it because you never know who you're gonna touch right great I would have loved to continue the discussion but time doesn't permit thank, thank you. you very much thank for you. coming over Okay, thank you. ਅੱਜ ਦਾ ਇਸ਼ੂ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਸਾਹਮਣੇ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਆਏ ਇਸ ਬਾਰੇ ਸਾਰੇ ਹੀ ਚਿੰਤਤ ਹਨ ਅੰਗਰੇਜ਼ੀ ਵਿੱਚ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਸੀ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਕੀਤੀ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਸਾਡੇ ਇੱਕ ਮਹਿਮਾਨ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਸਿਰਫ ਇੰਗਲਿਸ਼ ਹੀ ਬੋਲਦੇ ਨੇ ਉਸ ਕਰਕੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਇੰਗਲਿਸ਼ ਵਿੱਚ ਡਿਸਕਸ਼ਨ ਕੀਤੀ ਮਕਸਦ ਇਹੀ ਸੀ ਕਿ ਪਤਾ ਚੱਲ ਸਕੇ ਕਿ ਅੱਜ ਵਿਮਨ ਐਮਪਾਵਰਮੈਂਟ ਦੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਗੱਲ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਹਾਂ ਉਹ ਹੈ ਕੀ ਹੈ ਅੱਜ ਬੜੇ ਸ਼ਰਮ ਦੀ ਗੱਲ ਹੈਗੀ ਕਿ ਦੁਨੀਆ ਭਰ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਔਰਤ ਨੂੰ ਜਿਸ ਨਜ਼ਰ ਨਾਲ ਦੇਖਿਆ ਜਾ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਹਰ ਇੱਕ ਧਰਮ ਵਿੱਚ ਔਰਤ ਨੂੰ ਦਰਜਾ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਗਿਆ ਉੱਚਾ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਅਫਸੋਸ ਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਸਿਰਫ ਲਿਪ ਸਰਵਿਸ ਕਰ ਦਿੰਨੇ ਆ ਬਟ ਪ੍ਰੈਕਟੀਕਲ ਤੌਰ ਤੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਬਹੁਤ ਪਿੱਛੇ ਹੋ ਗਏ ਸੋ ਸਮਾਂ ਇਹ ਮੰਗ ਕਰਦਾ ਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਸਾਰੇ ਸਮਝੀਏ ਕਿ ਇਕੁਐਲਿਟੀ ਦਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਕਨਸੈਪਟ ਹੈਗਾ ਉਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਮਰਦ ਅਤੇ ਔਰਤ ਬਰਾਬਰ ਹਨ ਅਤੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਸਿਰਫ ਮੂੰਹ ਹੀ ਹੀ ਇਹ ਨਾ ਕਹੀਏ ਕਿ ਔਰਤ ਚੰਗੀ ਹੈ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਵਾਕਿਆ ਵਿੱਚ ਹੀ ਜੋ ਉਸ ਨੂੰ ਦਰਜਾ ਮਿਲਣਾ ਚਾਹੀਦਾ ਘਰ ਵਿੱਚ ਉਹ ਦਈਏ ਆਸ ਕਰਦਾ ਕਿ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਅੱਜ ਦੇ ਇਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਵਿੱਚ ਜ਼ਰੂਰ ਸਮਝ ਆਈ ਹੋਏਗੀ ਤੇ ਜਿਸ ਵਿਸ਼ੇ ਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਗੱਲ ਕੀਤੀ ਉਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਆਪਣਾ ਕੀ ਯੋਗਦਾਨ ਪਾ ਸਕਨੇ ਆ ਉਸ ਬਾਰੇ ਜ਼ਰੂਰ ਸੋਚੀਏ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਸੋ ਕਿਉਂ ਮੰਦਾ ਆਖੀਏ ਜਿੱਤ ਜੰਮੇ ਰਾਜਾਨ ਇਹ ਸਿਰਫ ਕਹਿਣ ਤੱਕ ਹੀ ਸੀਮਤ ਨਾ ਰਹਿ ਜਾਏ ਜੇਕਰ ਅੱਜ ਵੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਕੋਈ ਸਟੈਪ ਨਾ ਲਿਆ ਤਾਂ ਕੰਨ ਆਉਣ ਵਾਲੀ ਪ੍ਰਨੀਰੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਜ਼ਰੂਰ ਦੋਸ਼ ਦੇਵੇਗੀ ਆਪ ਸਭ ਦਾ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਸ਼ਾਮਲ ਹੋਣ ਲਈ ਧੰਨਵਾਦ ਫਿ